today we're going to be creating some really fun, loose watercolor paintings on some found papers in order for us to eventually create a really nice collage with them that will be used for our plant cut out silhouette image. So what we're going to do today is pick out what colors we want to use. You are going to choose an analogous color scheme. Analogous means similar colors or colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. So any three or four colors that are in a row sitting right beside one another, you could use for this project. For example, I could use yellow, yellow green, green, and blue green. All of those colors sit right beside one another and that would work. Or I could choose an analogous color scheme with just three colors and choose violet, blue, violet, and blue. That would work as well. So it's any three or four colors beside each other on the color wheel. So you pick out which colors you want to use. For my own picture, I think I'm gonna use red, red orange, orange, and yellow orange. And I have written that down on a sticky note just to help me remember which ones I'm planning on using. It may be very helpful for you to jot down the three or four colors that you want to use, so that way you remember which colors you're supposed to be using as well. So, choose your own analogous color scheme, pick the colors that you want to use, and then we'll get ready to start our project. The next thing that we're gonna do today is grab a couple of magazines and flip through it, and you want to look for pages that have a lot of written text on them. You wanna look for pages that have written text with a white background. We are not looking for pages that have lots of pictures on it. We just want text. Now, when you find a page that will work, I want you to rip it out of your magazine. It doesn't have to be particularly neat, but that will work as one page. So you want to find a good variety of different kinds of font and text. I wanted to show you a few other things that I found that I thought would work well. Um, this was a page out of a flyer that got mailed to me from um, a birding magazine. I like the classic sort of typewriter font, so I may use this one as well. But that gives me a nice collection of different fonts, different sizes, different pages and papers to work with. Now the next things that you're gonna need today is to put down some scrap papers on your work surface that will help protect your table from getting paint on it. Um, I just, I'm using some old sketch drawing paper. You could use newspapers or something like that, just something that you can spread out and protect your table surface from getting paints on them. You will also need a watercolor set. Now, depending on what kind of set you've purchased, you may have this kind that um, has the little individual watercolors like this and have a styrofoam tray with it. Or you may have a store-bought purchase set that looks something like this where it's maybe got little wells of color. Either one of those will work perfectly for what we're gonna use. You will also want a cup of water and I recommend that you find some sort of a cup or a container that you're not ever planning on using again or using with food because it's gonna get contaminated with paint. So I'm using an old glass jar that I always use for my um, paintings, but things like an old Tupperware or a yogurt cup, something like that that can either be thrown away or used just as a permanent painting cup is great, but nothing that you ever plan on eating or drinking out of ever again. And then you will also want um, just a paper towel, just something to dry your brush off if you need it, and a paintbrush. Some sort of watercolor brush will work great. It doesn't really matter the size today, um, so I'm just gonna use a standard, just a medium size watercolor brush. So I'm gonna grab my first magazine page that has my text on it, and I'm gonna start off by creating just what's called a wash of color. For this first one, we'll keep it very, very simple. We're gonna take one color from our analogous color scheme and paint the whole page 
just that flat color just to experiment with that. So I think for my first one, I'm just gonna start with something very simple. I'm just gonna mix just a middle of the road orange and paint this orange. If you have a tray like this, a styrofoam tray, you're gonna mix your colors on that styrofoam tray. But if you have a palette set like this, you're gonna mix your colors on the plastic lid. Usually there's a place for you to mix your colors in one of those sets as well. Now, the key ingredient in watercolor is water. You wanna make sure that you have a lot of water to dilute the pigment. So while this may not look like a lot of paint, it actually is, and it will go quite a ways um, if you water it down correctly. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush just straight out of the jar of water and swirl that around in my first color. So I'm gonna take yellow plus red to make an orange. Now I'm gonna swirl that onto my tray and get a nice bit of yellow out, ready to work with. And then I'm gonna use my red and add some red to it. Now, as I start to mix those, you can see that that's gonna turn into a nice orange. Yellow tends to be really quickly overwhelmed by other colors, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow back into it to make sure it's a nice, pretty, bright orange and not too red. And that's gonna give me what I need, a good quantity of paint to start with. You should notice when you're working with watercolors, they should flow really easily on your paint tray. You should never try to scoop up a bunch of paint and work with it where it's really thick and really sticky. Um, that's not how watercolors are meant to work. They should be very, very fluid when you're working with them. Um, another thing that I try to make sure is as I'm working, I try not to let a lot of water sit inside the little wells of my color because that will sort of turn that whole paint well into mush because it'll dissolve all those color pigments. So I try to lift that extra water up and out of the paint well. That way these can sort of dry out um, in between painting sessions. So I'm gonna start by just painting this whole page just a flat orange. The brush strokes don't really matter. I'm just gonna glide that paintbrush across the page and give this a very quick once over wash. Since I've got paper behind me, it doesn't matter if I go off the edges. And as soon as I run out of paint, I can come right back over here and mix a little bit more. Now, if you see any places that don't have very much color, you can go back and touch those up. Um, just a pretty general coverage. If you see some streaks and strokes that doesn't really matter at all for this project, that's totally fine. But then what I want to do is to let this dry. Now, since we're painting on such thin paper that was never really meant to get wet, um, you're gonna notice that your paper is gonna curl up on you, but that's totally fine. When it's dry, it's gonna work just fine for what we need it to. So very gently, I'm gonna lift this up and off my work surface and set this out of the way so it can fully dry. Then I'm gonna grab my next page. And this time, I may pick a different color. This time I may just pick pure red. And I may mix in a different place so it doesn't get mixed up with my orange. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Now, as soon as that one's finished, same thing, you can lift it up very carefully and slide it off your work surface for it to dry. Now for this next page, um, now that I've got two solid color pages, I'm gonna start to mix those colors together 
and create some different molted colors. Now I do wanna mention, if you have a page like this where it has a photograph, don't worry about painting the photograph because we'll be tearing that off and throwing that away later. So I just wanna paint the area of the paper that has the text on it. So what I'm gonna do over here is start by mixing and getting a couple different colors ready. And now for this page, we're gonna sort of create just a very splotchy color. Um, we're gonna paint some areas, and then we're gonna grab a different color and paint right up next to it. The nice thing about watercolors like this is when you paint one wet color next to another wet color, they will do what's called bleeding, where they sort of fade and blur into one another and that's what we want. So I can grab some reds and they'll start to mix in with those oranges and all those yellow oranges. Just very, very quickly, and you can see, because I've done this while all of this is wet, I have some areas where they start to bleed and there's some really pretty soft edges of color. Um, just make sure that you color everything as you're working. And while this is wet, you can even take some extra color and add some, some dots to it. And that will create some interesting patterns where it fans out. You will see that gives it a really nice Really nice effect. And then we're gonna let this page dry as well. Once you finish painting your five to six pieces of paper and you're letting those dry, I wanna show you how to clean up your paint palette and your colors and your watercolor brush. So the first thing that's really important, I am a very messy painter, so I always end up getting my colors mixed together inside of my wells. So right there on the inside of my yellow, you can see that I have a lot of red mixed into that. And I wanna make sure I get that out before my paint well dries overnight because then that red will permanently be mixed into my yellow. So what I'm gonna do is take my brush, rinse it in water first, dab off most of that water, and then I'm gonna create a little lift and pull out some of that red and rinse it again until I've lifted that unwanted color off that top layer of my yellow, and then it's nice and clean again, and it'll be ready to go for me to use tomorrow. And if you have a styrofoam paint tray like this one, you can just take this to your sink and rinse it off, and it'll wash off all of those paints. Another way you could do that, would you can take your paintbrush and wet your whole mixing tray, And then take your paper towel and you can wipe that area out. Now, to clean your brush, watercolors are a really great paint to start working with because they're so easy to clean up from. Um, so with your paintbrush, rinse it in your water cup and then take it to the sink and you're gonna rinse it under just the nice fresh sink water. 
And once it's been rinsed out, you don't have to use soap or anything like that. Just give it a good rinse under the sink. Straighten out your bristles once you've rinsed it and lay it down somewhere flat to dry. Then just take your water cup, dump it out in the sink, give it a quick rinse, and it will be ready to go for tomorrow as well.